For nearly three decades, Stephen Frink has traveled the world shooting everything from starfish to great white sharks for a wide variety of dive journals and magazines worldwide. He has provided stunning photographs for hundreds of promotional campaigns. He is considered one of the world's most frequently published underwater photographers, and he proudly calls the Florida Keys his home. Stephen, it is such a pleasure to talk with you. When did you find your calling as an underwater photographer? I was in graduate school doing something entirely different. And um, actually, I was getting a, a master's degree in experimental psychology. It had nothing to do with diving, nothing to do with photography. But I, I had time. I finished all my coursework, and I, I just had some spare time. I took a photo class. And it was so magic. You know, there was the whole alchemy of seeing the, the black and white print come up in a tray of Dectol. And for me, photography was it. I mean, I knew I was never going to work in psychology. Luckily for all the sick people in the world, it's a good thing. But um, I didn't know what kind of photography. You know, I, I really liked the, the whole process of labs, and I, I made a living when I got out of school as a darkroom technician. But also, when I was in graduate school, I, um, I, I needed a part-time job, and there was a marina in my neighborhood, a place called Scuba Duba. And uh, I thought, well, let me see if they need a job. You know, diving seems very cool and they clean boats for a living. So I went in and they said, yes, we'll hire you, but you must be certified as a scuba diver. So for 25 cents a linear foot, I got certified. You have just taken off since that day. Stephen, you have lived, you have worked all over the world. Why did you choose to make the Florida Keys your home? Well, you, you sort of have to go back in, in the Wayback Machine to 1978. I came to town on holiday like many of us do who stay here. And I saw John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park and I saw hundreds of thousands of, of tourists going there to, to scuba dive. And some of them took pictures. And there was really no services for processing film or camera rentals. And so really it was a pretty mundane thing. I, I, I went to a, a dive shop, Ocean Divers, and I, I met the guys and I said, look, can I rent a little space from your dive shop? I, I think maybe I could make a living doing this. And they said, okay, so they rented me 210 square feet and I uh, put a E6 darkroom in there and I would rent cameras in the morning, uh, go scuba diving in the afternoon, learn underwater photography. And um, after a couple years of that, I think just because I was here and, and people understood that I said I was an underwater photographer, even if I wasn't at that time, I got some assignments. And the first one was uh, a magazine that was being published in Miami. It was called Sport Diver Magazine at the time. And um, they sent me on an assignment down in, in Marathon. They had got skunked on weather. Um, their photojournalists couldn't, couldn't do it and they wondered if I could. So I borrowed a wide angle lens. I'd never shot wide angle before and a, a friend helped me out modeling and it worked and they sent me to the Cayman the next week. Wow, <laughs> wonderful. Now, obviously, if you've been here since 1978, you love the Keys. I love the Keys. You know, and there's something very special about the Keys, and, and it's because I've traveled a lot. You know, I did 17 years as a photojournalist for Skin Diver magazine, and I did uh, nine years as the director of photography for a different magazine, and for the last six years, I've been the publisher of Alert Diver. Anyway, the point is that I've spent a lot of years on the road going to different places, particularly in this hemisphere, in the Western Hemisphere. The Florida Keys are so unique, and it has to do with our, our whole um, the legacy of marine conservation. If you go back to 1960 when the, some very prescient people decided that John Pennekamp Pro Reef State Park should be developed, I mean it was about the same time that they thought you know the Everglades National Park was uh, an area deserving of protection and at that time you know there we, we all I suppose everybody who was alive then thought that uh, the coral reefs were forever and they were inexhaustible, but they weren't. There were barges going up and down the Keys with cranes that were ripping coral out and they were selling them in the Kiro shops on overseas highway. And, and there are people that understood that that's not forever. You can't do that. Coral grows too slow. And so they established this John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park and then that became the, the basis then for the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary, the Lou Key National Marine Sanctuary, and then ultimately the entire Florida Keys became a protected environment. Different zones of protection, you know, some places you can spearfish, some places are total uh, sanctuary preservations area so that 
Um, there, there are no tag zones, and you know that's really the, our marine nurseries. But the, I think the real point is that from the very early years before people really actively scuba dived, this was an area of protection. And so if you contrast the marine life here compared to almost anywhere else in this hemisphere, we have so many more fish. Which is not to say we, you know, we don't have issues in terms of water quality and coral cover and things like that. You know, I think we're very cognizant about what it takes to continue to preserve this environment. But we've done a, a, a pretty fantastic job with the fish. Stephen, it has been such a pleasure talking with you. I am such a fan of your work. Well, thank you, Jenna. If more people want to follow you, they can go to Stephen Fring Photo.